Hi folks. Patty and I went for a walk in Wiscasset yesterday, just about sunset. I noticed this shack in an alley between two buildings and thought it was very intriguing. There was no light in this location at all because of the shade from the buildings. But I thought it would be an interesting image to work with and see what I could pull up out of it. So I shot a bracket of it. And out of the three shot bracket, this was the best. When I shot the scene, I placed the shack in the upper portion of the frame to provide some anticipatory space in the front to allow area for the viewer to be walking into the building. The sky is of no concern at all, so I put as little of that in the picture as possible, and then later on I even cropped it down to a smaller section of sky. What I want to talk about, though, is how I manage the tonality of the image. This is what I started with. Then I went into, I went into Nix HDR FX2 to adjust this. Now, HDR, you might think, is an odd choice to use, but I find this a very interesting way to approach it because it opens up the shadow details, increases the color intensity, but doesn't really lose any detail. So after running this through the HDR filter, this is what I ended up with. As you can see, I've got lots of shadow detail. None of my highlights got blown out. I have the same amount of tonality in there that I had in the beginning. So then I just added a little bit of a brightness contrast adjustment, which put a little bit dark, more darkness into the shadow areas. Then I decided to, then I duplicated that layer, and then I duplicated it a second time because some filters you use actually destroy the original image. So you want to make sure you duplicate it so that you can compare the results from both. Then I went down to Topaz, went to Impressions. Then in Pre Impressions, I chose Pencil Sketch. And once you get into Pencil Sketch, there's a ton of adjustments here. And I've been using this particular style for quite a while and found some very interesting things about how to make how to get the most out of it. And one of them is is by controlling your brush size. So I usually take the brush size down as low as I can and I can still bring back detail by using the stroke. I start with the length because this particular brush, the length actually gives you a more interesting result than the width. So I've got it there, now I'm going to bring the size back up a little bit. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more width. Okay. So this is pretty good. We can see the, the scribble effect that we're getting. Um, one of the problems with the original image is it was flat. Um, and uh, we needed to get some more life into it. But where it's in such deep shadow, that's hard to do. But one of the things when you're doing a panely type effect on an image that will really help you control the mood and tone of the whole image is what's called underpainting. So if you go all the way back down to the bottom here where it says background, and if you click here, you can see I have several oranges picked. I'm going to click on one of these oranges, and that's going to totally change the nature of the image. And you can see how that's popped it right up. Now, if you wanted to create a cold fielding, you could use a blue. Or if you wanted to make it look like a night scene, you could use a blue. And it will automatically just make it shift to a whole different tonality interpretation. So now we're going to go back up, and we're going to play a little bit with the size of the brush again and figure out, I want enough of that orange showing through. See, if I take it all the way up, the orange disappears and we can see how the picture automatically loses that snap. So I'm going to bring it down so I have enough of the orange coming through. So there it is. See how it's giving it that nice warm feeling? And I'm going to now do a balance between the original image and the background. Okay, that looks pretty good. Once I've done that, I come down and 
I do my contrast and color intensity. I use these two palettes together to control the final tonality of the image. You can see I can come here and increase the brightness. But you see how I'm losing detail in some areas? But then I can come on up here and reduce the overall lightness in the color area of the image and I can bring the detail back. And then I can play with the contrast. And by manipulating these three, I can get a pretty close nailed interpretation that I want of the color and the tonality. I usually push the brightness up until I start to lose detail. See, I'm starting to lose a little bit in there, so I'll stop that. Then I'll play with the contrast. And maybe push the contrast up and the brightness up until I start to lose a little bit, and then come on up and play with the Then sometimes you have to go the other way, pull the brightness back down, and see which gives you the better effect. Every image is different. You can't say, well, no, I did this on the last one and it worked. It's not true with this. You have to keep playing with them. until you get what you want and you can't get it until you see it. See, I don't want that snow to be quite so blue on the foreground. There we go. That's going in the direction I want it to go. Let me try reducing that a little bit more. Nope. Now let's pull the vibrance back a little bit. So you have to just keep Okay. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to put a little vignette in here to help pull the attention back towards the center. There we go. Now I could just click on the blue right here and go in and reduce some of the intensity of the blue using this. There we go. Go back to the full spectrum. Boost up the contrast a little bit more. There we go. Now, I'm going to come on up again and play with the brush size. Uh, okay. Now remember, I want to maintain the integrity of the sketch look because that allows that orange to show through. Um, there. So that's where I want it to be, and I'll just click OK. Here's the before and the after. And you can see by adding that undercolor into the image, how it gives it a lot more life and pop. Now at this point, I'd probably still do some more contrast adjustments and edge treatments and crop the image to make it more effective. Um, and try and get it to really there now we're starting to get it it's all about contrast if you get the right contrast the image is going to sing and if you don't it's going to look flat so that's where I'm going to stop this video when I did the original treatment on this it took about two hours because I had to keep experimenting with different methods of approaching how to get the end result I wanted. So I hope you found this helpful. Keep shooting.